I'm Tim Morage. Welcome to the Market Geometry uh, Mini Mentoring Sessions. Uh, we hold them every Monday morning. It's the 21st of September. It's absolutely pitch dark in Chicago. Oh my God, I think fall is here. That's okay. We can still make money. The world hasn't ended. Uh, we're trying a new technology this morning, and uh, hopefully the recording will come out gorgeous. So that being said, let's look at the markets. This is 377 tick yen. I'm just going to unfold in here. Oh. There we go. And you can see, prior to the weekend, we had, uh, let's just try look at market structure for a second. Prior to the, to the, uh, to the weekend, what we had was a trading range here. Um... Somebody asked how I was feeling. Yeah, it's kind of a tough weekend breathing. Um, the air is very, very heavy in Chicago. Um, it's very fall-like, uh, very, very humid. Here's our trading range. You can see the poke below. Um, no doubling or tripling range. It's just a nasty trading range. Um, I don't know how I sound this morning, but I feel okay. We'll except to see as the day goes on. Um, they're pumping me full of interesting antibiotics. And hopefully one of them will do the trick. Now, my mouse on this computer, I'm on a different computer, different server, by the way. Uh, those of you who don't, have not heard the news, um, and I'm not a news dude, but that's not a bad, that's a modified shift. So, let's make it, uh, you know what, I don't have a preset set up on this one. We'll leave it just red down slope. It's a modified shift, you can see it cuts right through the action here. And, um, one nice touch down here, we come back up, we make uh, the range, yeah, plenty of opportunities. And even when we break down, let me uh, make sure it's tagged, and now we'll break out here. And you can see, even as we come back down here, when the bottom of the range becomes a switchback, we leave double bottoms, you come back up, can't get back into it. You have plenty of opportunities to get short with a small stop, run back down, and grab the median line. Now, is it a ton of money? No, but it's about 80 pips with a small stop, which, again, that should be on your list. Yep, nice retest. Now, uh, I wanted to give you a warning before I go on to the next currency. Let me go on to the next currency. Um, and I mean no disrespect to anybody. Maybe this person is the smartest person in the history of the world. However, somebody actually sent me an a email asking me to uh, look at their... How do I say this? Look at their uh, new marketing material, because apparently they're coming out with a, can't tell if it's a book or a course. We're, you know, we're very popular, and we're, in, we're on, besides Twitter, we're on a lot of things. And so they're going to put out their own book or course or something, and it combines the mysteries of pitchforks, or forks as they call them, as he calls them. Uh, I'll give you the news in a second, along with Elliott Wave. And it was kind of a brought, brought out view. I'm not going to mention the person's name. Like I said, maybe they did their research. Maybe they know something. Maybe they don't. But I think they're probably just taking advantage of uh, this is popular. Just like the gentleman in Texas did who was a can uh, trader, put together a $55 book that was basically meaningless. But he did it because pitchforks or median lines are becoming popular. This is another one of those. And when I read the material, it was just, oh, my God. Well, if you saw the material, it's even more of a marketing scheme. But even worse than that, A gentleman took a seminar here. Some of you here that are near or dear to my heart know this gentleman because you were in the seminar with him in this special group that got the special pricing for the seminar. And uh, then he later stiffed me by claiming to his credit card company that he got nothing out of the seminar and that I was just a huckster. Oh, if you see one that mentions my name, Wayne. Hi, Wayne, by the way, I have an email for you. I've just been basically laid low. So I will be emailing you. Please, please, if it mentions my name, please, please tell me where it is because that's illegal. No, I didn't forget you. I love you, buddy. And, and by the way, I feel bad for you as well. Uh, I know you went through uh, a tough personal time recently, and uh, literally that was the week I was in the hospital, so... 
I didn't forget you. I love you. Anyway, this gentleman then tried to come into the premium section, and I, re I rejected him. I wouldn't take his money. Now I got a call from his lawyer yesterday on a Sunday, if you can imagine this, because remember me telling you all about the, the $17,500 book that purported to show you the secrets that Andrew's professionals, like me, wouldn't reveal to you? Anybody remember that? Pivot C, the green fork. Yeah, I got a lot to correct here. Um, yeah, there's a reason why this is so messy. This was me doing trials. There we go. Um, anyway, his lawyer called yesterday because they are suing this gentleman to try and get their money back. And they want to know, the same guy who stiffed me, wants to know if I will be an expert witness against the gentleman who wrote this book so that his client can get his $17,500 back. So, justice is served, just so you know. What goes around does come around. So, two things, please. Make sure you pay attention before you spend your hard-earned money, especially in something that's 17500 But second of all, you reap what you sow. Okay, so bonds, um, I'd go through an erase. Oh, hell, I'll go through an erase them anyway. The news, total, big, big, big British oil company came out this morning and said, we're going to be short on oil for the foreseeable future, and by 2020 it should be hitting us extremely hard. Gee, what a surprise, huh? Oh, some fool will pay 17k on a book, and I guess you don't have to sell many if you charge them 17k, but that's probably a different story. There's the pit. There's a downsloping fork. Is that a corner trade? Not really, because as we talked about on Friday, I would like to have formed if this C, and this is at. Uh, 09, the high here is at 13. I might have survived, but what I really want to see is I want to see the bunching and then sell a retest and survive. I might have survived by one tick. I might not have here. Um, this is not a classic corner trade. Um, also, there has to be a reason for it to be running out of energy. Filling the top of this canyon right there. And you can see that added it, it worked as a switchback line in a lot of ways. How about that? Now the question is, where are we likely to go? Well, we filled this can. We had no problem filling this canyon here. We had uh, no problem coming down in here and leaving double bottoms. I don't really think this is a canyon. I really think, of course, I'm going to fix this median line in a second, but. Um, I think we're probably headed down to at least here. So 118.10-ish. Now let me see if I can fix this median line. There we go. So if we get a test up in this area the, with a nice stop, uh, I'd be interested. Also, let me do one more for you. There are two polls coming today. One is about what time in the morning should we start. The other is um, about the, th the potential for a three-day, so the modified shift, uh, I'm going to have to do that again, the potential for a three-day seminar in February or March. People are already looking for venues, um, and it's basically, you know, what would you like to see? Would you go? What speakers would you like? Things like that. Um, I'm actually pretty excited to do it, and we'll be we're doing it somewhere warm in the United States. The big news, Bears win. Yeah, the big surprising news, there you go. How visit, to, you know what, Wayne? I would love to come to the UK. This is uh, Bonds. Okay, up, if you'll, can, can you guys see these titles up here? I don't know on this new screen. ZB, pound F is continuous Bonds. You can, okay. I don't, see, because I don't know what you're seeing until I see this new video. This is a complete new setup. Um, wait, isn't there some broker that would be interested in having me over for a uh, series of seminars in the UK? Roger, isn't there somebody over in... Well, Wayne, make it happen. Hey, Georgie, how are you? 
Well, yes, the video to you will look the same because I'm using GoToWebinar. It's the video that we produce afterwards will be rendered renders in a, in a instead of three or four hours, it'll render almost immediately and then be up right away. And what we we'll, yes we want we are talking about recording the three day advanced seminar into a DVD as well. Yep. Anyway, I would love to come to Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong. I'm shocked if somebody isn't interested in doing this. I would love to go to the UK. Do you want to throw in some other European cities? I'm there. Well, Singapore, I'd love Singapore. Sure, absolutely. I've been there. I love Singapore. Scott Bogan says he'll go to Australia if I do it there. Oh, well, you know what? We'll have special, you know, actually that's the one place where you can't good, uh, get good uh, airfare deals, but we'll do something. But anyway, if anybody has uh, a broker that's interested in, in uh, um, I, look, I'm not trying to get paid. Somebody pick up expenses, I'll be glad to just do it for them. Yeah. Shanghai, there you go. Roger, all I need is expenses. Period. Period. If their brokerage client base would like some quality education, we'll, bro we'll, we'll webcast it live from Singapore. We'll do the world tour. I'd rather do that than deal with people I don't like. How's that? Okay, anyway. Of course you can join free. Yeah. Sure. All right, so let's see. This was bonds. So my interest in bonds is to sell a uh, spike higher. And, uh, you know, when we get to come out of these... Timothy Morgan, marketgeometry.com email will always hit me, yes. It'll also hit Catelyn. Um, and the other last th piece of news, by the way, um, excuse me, if we end up doing something with StockTwits, for those of you that were worried, and I know Catelyn is worried to death, it won't change the morning ses session one bit. The only thing that will change the morning session is if all of you say, hey, I'm part of the family and this is what I want to see. Because I feel, you know, look, I'm going through a tough time physically, and I've got two two families. I've got my wife and two children, and I've got you guys. Well, and my 91-year-old mother. And I've got you guys. I'm interested in that. So, you know, we, we may or may not end up doing something with stock twits, and it's very close to decision time. But we're not going to change this format for them, period. We'll change it if you guys have ideas or interests. Okay, it's for you guys. Well, this is, uh, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a week change or two weeks. I'm talking about, is 6.30 too early? Is 7 o'clock better? Is 7.30 better? Well, you know, it would be those kind of questions. That's, I want to know what you guys think, especially as we go into, remember, right, the week after, after um, Halloween in Chicago, we go off of daylight savings time, so we have these weird hour changes. Some of you do, some of you don't. So that also change, may change your perspective. And... Uh, Now's, now's a good time to make some decisions about what to do for the winter. Um, and I have no idea, you know, whether or not I'll end up in Arizona and when that will happen. I'm not even allowed to fly out there by the CDC until uh, basically uh, after Christmas. I'm not allowed to fly or drive. So let's, let's make some, uh, and if your answer is leave it alone, that's fine. That's fine. No problems. Uh, Catlin made some changes, by the way. Uh, to the web page over the weekend. I haven't had a chance to look at them, but you might want to poke around. More are coming. More are going to be coming every day. He's working his you-know-what off. Let's look at the big euro. Ooh, let's not look at the big euro. Some of these, um, there we go. Let's look at the 20-minute euro. Some of these charts, uh, I have to be a little bit careful because I was throwing stuff together as fast as I could last night. I have to go to bed early, but I was throwing stuff to bed as fast as I could and moving Ensign onto this machine and um, some of them didn't clone their data quite correctly, probably. So, Euro, you can see it's rolled over nicely. We've got this nice rounding top. But let's analyze this. Very I'm going to sound like Elmer Fudd here. Very, very carefully. Well, yeah, AK says he thought we were going to do a new training video. Well, I did too, except that I slept the weekend away. I'm sorry. The images are done. You just need my 
my my voice it's coming um I'm, I'm sure that's one thing in fact i probably talked to Catalan all of about five minutes this weekend um to iron out one problem i just uh, to be honest I, I didn't even see my family much this weekend. I slept. Uh, they, they, it's just, I mean, it's the nature of the beast, but hopefully that makes me better today. So. U.S. Treasury will auction an additional $122 billion between Tuesday and Thursday, Andy says. Hey, you know, let me ask you a question. Those of you that remember, they suspended 30-year bond auctions in 1996. What the hell were they thinking? Nobody could get enough of them. Then they quit selling them. Do you consider the recent swing lows to have been taken out since it was taken out by a small margin? No, Magnus. Uh, I, I, I think... Uh, you mean right here, Magnus? Thank you, Scott. Yeah, where the trend line is touching? No, I, I just consider these, these are like probes. Oh, to the left, same here. These are just probes. You know, are there orders down there? Yes, they are. They're washed and rinses. You saw me got, you saw me get washed and rinsed out of the oil. It's the same thing, basically. Under. It's the big traders going, hey, this is the top of the range over here. As we poke down here, are there orders to buy? Yes, there are. Never mind. And they run them up. Now we've got this nice rounding top of this dome formation. The question is, is this now the baseline? And are we headed up? Or are we going to come back and test and break through, and will this become a switchback? Wayne says, the internationalforecast.com, great, great site for you, okay? I'll check it out afterwards. All right. More to the left. Down here? Let me circle it. Or let me ellipse it. Is that is that it, Magnus? No. <laughs> oh, already answered. Okay. All right. So you that you get the idea in the euro. The the you know you can uh, try and buy a range if you want. With a stop underneath these lows, nothing wrong with that. This looks to be buyers. Um, the question is, let's take a look at it. Let's blow it up a little bit, so to speak. We are starting to take out some highs. What I would really like it to do, I don't know what that is. Oh, I know what it is. Let me do it again. I'd like it to take out that high. Then come back. And give me some love. Yeah, this is a beautiful range example. Yeah, wash and rinse is down here, absolutely. Yes, this should be balance line support. Yep. It's bad. We'll put it to you this way. It's balance line support until it's no longer balance line support. So make sure you have a stop. Make sure it's a small enough stop. Me, I wouldn't rate waste more than, I'd like a 10 pip stop, but I wouldn't waste more than 15 on this. Could there be a potential corner trade? Well, this would be a fib dance, not a corner trade, but yes. Uh, in fact, let's do the, Paul, are you here? I'm sure you are. The names are just going by so fast I'm asleep. There's our 3A2. We haven't broken back above the 3A2, so it's still weak as a kitten. We're bunching up here, although I suppose I could do, let me erase that. I could do this and go, this high is one possibility. Now we're right at the 3A2. There you go. Now it's a fib dance. Now the question is, what I found in these fib dances is they're either down here, the greatest buying opportunities, and you blow up through here. And get three, four hundred points out of it, or pips in this case, or you break through, get stopped out, and they go two, three, four hundred points on the downside. So you, we might want to learn, um, as I watch these and think about this, 
we might want to couple this with either a by the bottom by the balance line with a 15 pip stop and make this a 15 pip stop in reverse how about that something to watch what what should the bars look like uh, they should if they're gonna hold they should come down test I don't care if they poke through the, but they should close let me widen it out now all right everybody take a look see how this bar comes down and tests look at the close up here with great separation comes down here and tests great separation comes down and tests at 164.45 and the close is 47 this has so so separation so you pass on this one but if you didn't buy you'd actually probably be buying because of the separation on this one if you ever ordering to buy you get you, you'd buy right here your stop would be I would put my stop underneath this low this low right here is 146.35 you'd be getting long at 45 I put my stop at uh, 31 something like that if you passed on this one, you watch this bar close. This is not enough separation. I would like about five pips of separation, three to five pips. This is only two pips. I'd really like five to seven pips, to be honest. So you buy another bar. You wait for this one. This one certainly gave it to you. So now you have an order in again at 45. Stop at 31. You would have got filled either on this bar or this bar. At this point, you've got 25 pips in it. Make sense? Last two closed bars, yeah. They look very nice. Um, did I say hello to you, Mary? Aaron, how's the little guy going? How's Colby doing? The 18th. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Like that, Christine? A lot of alternating closes? Absolutely. Um, that's why, um, and let me anchor that and then push this back out. That's one thing about the alternating closes. That's why I wanted to take out some swing highs. We've got double tops here. We've got double tops here. We've got this bunching action. I want to, I want to know that this thing is going to move away from the bottom of this range. And now this median line, if we have this in here. Try the width fork. Okay, hang on just a second. Wings in. Wants out at 85. Okay. I like it. Um, if you're not getting sound, you're in trouble. Uh, alternating closes. When you're in a trading range like this, but this is now too many. There's too many bars here. If you get down, if you come down to where support should be, and you head like a uh, steam engine or a rocket, and you get five or six bars, and they have alternating closes, highs then lows, and highs then lows. Andrews believed, as do I, that that's a sign that the market has run out of, it's befuddled, if you will. It's run out of energy. It's scratching your head saying, what do I want to do now? Theo, I'm not smart enough to, to draw off a of point. It's, I'll just end up spending five minutes drawing a meaningless fork, trust me. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat, yes, exactly. So, um, in, that, in, other, in other way, you get the idea. Watch for the separation. If you're going to buy at this balance line, if it blows through, I wouldn't spend more than 15 pips. You might even consider a stop in reverse. I know that sounds odd coming out of my mouth. I'm thinking out loud here in terms of us developing. Paul and I are watching this, developing this entry whether it's a continuation of the upside. But if it's a failure, then we want to be on board for the stop in reverse.
Magnus, yes, says, stop and reverse, go with the breakout of stopped out. Well, let's paper go with it. Let's not do it live a few times and see if we like that. How about that? So let's let's add that into the research. I'll go back and take a look at the, I've now done about two, 275 examples of this in the last six weeks. Um, so we're starting to get st uh, statistically significant. Now I'll add in stop and reverses and see if it makes it even better. Because right now I'm not seeing enough for me to be really excited. It seems like a super energy coil. It's absolutely, absolutely right at the fib. So if it takes out these fib traders buy orders, that's why I said if it takes out this high. And you're already long, Wayne, you're going to be filled so fast. Now, if the FIB guys hold, stop and reverse might be the answer. So we'll go back and take a look at that in our statistics now and see if we could uh, come up with something a little more interesting. Um, let's see. I'm going to... Canada, 240. Let's see how the Canada's doing. Ah, oh, darn it. See, it gets down to the 105s. We get ready for the parity party. I know I had, this was the other question. Would we rather, here we go. Would we rather have, now think about the entire group, folks, not just of those of you that live in Chicago. Hey, Bob, how are you? Would we rather have two hours of drinks at the Merck Club? Well, there isn't a Merck Club anymore. That's series at CBOT. Or would we rather have Tim sends beers to all the Canadian banks in Chicago. So Harris Bank, Royal Bank of Canada, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll send him a couple cases of American beer and a happy parody, happy loony, and then wait, and then everybody that's a member of MarketGeometry.com gets a handmade glass mug, courtesy of one of our members, Reese, who owns a glass factory, in the mail. I can't. I can't sell you. Send you liquor, or we'd get arrested. What do you think of that idea? It would have the market geometry logo, and it would say "Happy Looney." We like that better. All right, cool. Unshift the pink fork. Let the pink fork free. Hmm, coming up to interesting area. Stopped basically on the median line, popping back up. We're at the upper median line parallel. Uh, only problem is no stop. But we come out of the hole very nicely. Absolutely good catch. So let's see if we can make a stop up here, which means test, fall off with good separation, come back up, sell the retest, put a stop up here. Or if it blows through... We'll have to think about being buyers. Uh, I wonder. Well, 200 didn't really help us. Too bad. I think we looked at that on Friday. You can see we missed the 200. This is the second warning line out here. Uh, if I'm, th yeah, what I'm talking about today, Magnus, has nothing to do with my long-term position. My long-term position is at 124. We're down at 107. I could care less. It would be to take out 100 or 200 pips. Has nothing to do with the two. I, I don't mix or match the two. I don't even think about the long-term position. Stops are in on that. It's it's good or not good. It flies on its own. Meaningless to me. Uh, for those of you that are new here, and we do have some more new people again this morning, which is a good thing. The Merck is uh, advertising us, as are some other friends of the family, so to speak. Let's grab, uh, I don't know if this is a lie, but okay, here we go. Here's the, just for chuckles, this is the Euro 1444 tick. chart looks very similar right and and the reason here, let me just do this let's do just a little bit of uh, mini mentoring I think we're going to change the name of these to the uh, market geometry mini mentoring sessions I think that's more uh, more appropriate 
but I'll let you guys, you guys will be the judge. Um, okay, so let's start out and talk about crayon drawing. Um, something that we started here. We want to take a look at, we've seen the propensity of mountains and valleys. And here's our mountain. I'm going to draw what's called a baseline. It's just, it's a multiple pivot line. MPL, we, do, we voted to call it. You missed that. Frank, Wayne, you weren't here on Friday, were you? We voted to call this what Andrews would call this, a multiple pivot line. So let me mark it. That means it's got multiple touches, more than three. This is the baseline. You can see price came up. Here's the mountain coming down. She hits the baseline. Doesn't quite make it. We spawn a lower high. So this is our canyon. Here's our first look at a canyon, which is the opposite of a mountain. And you can see we don't make it up to fill the canyon either. We make a lower high. Then we come down and we hit the baseline. Eh. I guess I'll leave it over there. We hit the baseline. You can see we leave basically double bottoms at this baseline. Can you just trade off the crayons? Absolutely. You could buy this, put a 15... Uh, tick stop on this rascal, you would have survived just fine. Especially if you come back here. Let me widen out some more. Now let's look at it. You come back here and you can see here we close with the low was 146, 46, which is the baseline. The close was 54. So that's more than five pips. So within five bars, can you buy the retest with a 15 pip stop? Absolutely. If you bought this at 46, this low is 32. So you would have been able to buy this swing low as well as your stop. So let's do that. Uh, 46, 31. What was this low? 32. You survived by one tick. Welcome, welcome to uh, the beauty of using market structure as your stop. So you're long against the baseline. You buy on this retest. Price comes up. It's ta now it's starting to take out to the left. We're not using any median lines here. Not, not yet. We don't have to. Comes back, forms another mountain. Now it does briefly break below the baseline but look where it closes and look at the next bar it closes with even nicer separation great separation great separation great separation now we take out highs and these are in the if if you're not a member these are in the step-by-step -step lessons the importance of taking out highs to the left as Murad would say look to the left and be right I wish I had all my presets going but I don't uh, use it as default there we go then we take out this high right here and when we take out these highs it tells us that there are still new buyers so we come down and test take out these highs you gotta really like your position now Once, when the moment you take out these highs your stop should now go five pips, maybe seven pips underneath here, or at worst, you can go to break even, you can go right under here, or at worst, underneath this swing low. Now we need, even, we need another, we leave another swing high with these double tops. When they get taken out, at that point, your stop should be underneath this swing low, which is double bottoms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the way up. The question is, at 
as you get, we're going to look to the left. As you get to this top of this canyon, which is like a baseline, are we going to stop? And you can see, poked through and closed right above it the first time through. No problem at all. So you can trade these without any median lines. Period. You're looking to the left, you're long at 46. You take 50 pips out with a 15 pip uh, uh, risk, you're talking about over 3 to 1. And relatively fast, actually, about an hour. You can continue if you want. Put your stop here once this high gets taken out. Etc. Etc. Just keep just keep moving it on, uh, doubling the range. Looks like about doubling the range to me. And so many times we see when the ranges get doubled, prices just run out. So somewhere up here, as they, as Mama used to say, trees don't grow to the sky. You want to take your money and just run. Hey Mary, how are you? Do I personally buy or sell crayon lines, Magnus says? Absolutely. Actually, um, I, I know everybody's been asking, when are articles coming back and when's the next lesson coming? Yeah, Mary, mark this down uh, as uh, 7 to 708 as market structure example. Maybe we can just put it up there as a mini video. Um, um, I did a whole article for uh, moneyshow.com. I haven't turned in any of them. Um, because I don't have time to clean them up, I, I'm much more interested in getting lesson three and four up. So that's first on my list. Mary's working hard on DVD cleanup. Would I think of getting short up here? No, there's no sign of weakness. Aaron says, how many points under the highs, lows should you move your stop? And does that change with time frame? Now, it does change with time frame, and it also changes with, with uh, what you're trading. In the currencies, it's 5 to 7 pips or ticks. Uh, in the bonds, it's about the same. In the S&Ps, it's five, actually it's 5 ticks, which is a handle and a quarter. Um, I, I like 3, but 5 is even better. Um, but if you go to 60 minutes or dailies, completely different story because the volatility of each bar is larger. Oh, Mary, I'd rather have you work on DVDs rather than cleaning up the articles. DV, DVDs for beginner seminars, absolutely. We're taking three of them. We're going, hey, this is good, this is crap, this is good, this is crap. Mary's doing it. I'm letting her do it because she's got an objective eye. Then she's going to say, all right, Tim, we need a half an hour on the history of Andrews, Marischal, and Babson. We need uh, more on market structure. We need this. We need that. Um, and then we'll add to that stuff that you've never seen before. And then people that subscribe to the seminars because uh, via buying a DVD will get that. If you've already taken the seminar and you pay the reduced price, which is going to charity, you're going to get that. Plus, you're going to get all kinds. Every time we do a seminar, we're going to add a new pack uh, of educational material, what was new but cleaned up, you'll get a knowledge expansion pack, Mary says this, thank you. And you'll get like three or four knowledge ex expansion packs as a thank you. Um, so, does the width of the canyon or mountain make a difference in your trading decisions? Uh, the bigger the canyon, uh, the more times it's been tested, or mountain, absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Well, we, we know the DVDs will be great if Mary's working on them. All right, let's go. There's a lot going on in commodities this week. And Andy reminded me this morning, open interest is at record high, and it's short open interest, by the way. Um, here's gold. They're doing their best to push it and keep it under 1,000 for the G20 meeting. Good luck with that. 
Brian says, knowledge expansion pack is a cool name like plugging more RAM into the computer. Yep, that's the idea. See, Mary's much smarter than I am. Let me refresh because I doubt this is correct, but could be. Okay, guess it was. Um, they're trying to keep it down, and the first thing that hits my eyes might not hit yours. I'm drawn from the hip. Well, there we go. Now let's try it. That wasn't what I was trying to draw. There we go. There's my sliding parallel. I know it's not the same frequency, but I'm just curious if I did this or if I'd be better off. Probably be better off just using an inside sliding parallel, huh? Let's just take a look. Nothing wrong with that. Then you can then you'll feel better because it has the same frequency. Now I'll grab this again, paint it down here, and in Ensign all you have to do is make it active. See the two ends? And then hit the space bar. And that's pretty darn good. And you can even move it up and grab all of them. If it, actually you can take it off of this low right here. Grab the whole shebang. So here's your sliding parallel underneath. This is a rolling chop. It's also a trading range. All right, Wayne, take care. Three possible drives to the top, absolutely. Um, and now, please, 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 please. I know we have been talking about this. We warned people on Friday just because we're all excited about the potential upside for gold. Um, make sure you get in with good trade entry. Don't just blindly go, oh, Tim and Andy and Paul said, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Look for a high probability entry. You have to have quality price structure and a good stop. The IMF is, Mark, Mark says the IMF is selling more gold. Yes, they are, but they won't sell it to China. Isn't that interesting? When trading channels, do you only make trades in overall trend direction? In this example, buy or sell low. Yes, absolutely, Aaron. I always try and trade with the tr trade with the trends. You get a 10% edge by trading with the trend. That's whether it's median lines, action reaction lines, channels, anything. Mark, are you on the IMF board? Just curious. Oh, well, I'll, you know what? I'll vote for you. You want to run for it? I'm joking. So we said this on Friday, and I'll say this again. Don't get all bulled up just because you saw us, you know, doing this and talking. You heard us talking about it. Um, but that being said, you know, it's record open interest. They're going to have to either do something about it in terms of changing the rules, changing margin, closing some credit lines. Uh, and that wouldn't affect the, the people that are short because... Of course, they're owned by the government, J.P. Morgan and friends. They're, let me say it again. They're owned by the government. There's two. You know, I used to laugh at Hugo Chavez. This is the breakout of the month-long wedge I mentioned several weeks ago. Yes, it is, Bernie. You're right. This, Bern, this isn't Bernie from the Swiss National Army, is it? Let me just ask. Who used to call us up and tell us about wonderful trades to make, and then they turned out true when I was in the cash foreign exchange market. I bet it is, Bernie. Well, you say no, which means yes, because because you're a secret agent, right? It's Bernie double eleven. Is it a wash and rinse break out of the large range? I think time will tell. I don't know. Magnus, I think this is the... Oh, retired NASA living in Florida. Well, hats off to you, my friend. I, I think I probably, if you're living in the Keys, I rented your house a couple years ago. It was beautiful. Um, Andy tells me, and I believe him, as you know, Andy's my gold guy. This is the week to watch gold and silver. Even if you don't trade it, casually watch gold and silver and see what the hell happens.
It is a rolling chop, yes. The question is, how does it play out? We've got one, two, three drives to the top, one, two, three drives to the bottom. How is it going to play out? Don't know. You can choose your poison. If you've got a good stop, you can play it from the upside. And, uh, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're daring do and quick on your feet, you can certainly play it from the short side. You can play either one. Me, at this stage of my career, these are upsloping. I play it from the upside until it broke out on to the downside. Then I, then I find a way to get in. But that's just me. What has to happen for me to want to get short magnets? That's a great question. I want to take out some lows to the left. Let's look at this. We broke out of this range here. We had one swing low that was taken out here to the left. Then we made new highs. So now let's take a look. Have we taken out another swing low? Well, this one doesn't count because it doesn't become a swing low until this high is taken out. So we didn't take out a swing low here. We haven't taken out a swing low here. So I want some swing lows taken out to the left. In fact, I want two of them. So I want, before I'll get short, or I'll think about getting short, and even then I might not get short, but that has to get taken out. And this needs to be taken out. And that's not that much. We're only talking about 20 bucks, which in the gold these days, this is 20 bucks. So it's not, we're not asking for much. At that point, you can draw a down slope immediately. Hell, let's just draw one now. Nobody's got my hand drawn, uh, tied behind my back. Let's go to this low. Well, here's, here's one. How about this? Here's something that ought to scare you. I take the, the high, the low, the high, and I get an upsloping median line. And we've got a baseline right underneath it, yep. If you try and draw a downsloping median line and you get upsloping lines, the light bulb ought to go on, just so you know. That doesn't mean you, there's, you can't get short. But that ought to make you worried. That tells you how skewed this is to the upside. All right, let's look at some more commodi commodities before I run out of oxygen, as they say. Um, we're going to look at, let's see if I got absolutely clawed. Is that even a range? I think I even took it off, didn't I? No, I didn't. Here, here's, well, we can't see it. We're down here at 70.30. This is, I'm not even going to bother to fix the uh, price. But you can see us getting stopped out on a wash and rinse. You want to see Tim take a losing trade? Yes. You want to see, see a, a beautiful wash and rinse? There it is right here. Maybe I moved my stop too quick. I think the big lesson was I was in the wrong time frame. I was using a smaller time frame to trade a port, use a portfolio, make a portfolio trade happen. Instead, I should have been looking at, and we talked about this on Friday in the paid session, in the premium, I'm not supposed to say paid. I guess that's got a bad connotation. We should be looking either in dailies. Now it doesn't look quite so bearish, does it? And we probably wouldn't have got stopped out because we would never have moved our stop if we were short. But I don't even know that I would have gotten short. So the first lesson was be in the right time frame. Second lesson is be very, very as as a uh, Elmer Fight would say, be very, very careful about moving your stops. You don't want to be too close to the action. I got over anxious, moved too close to the action, and paid the price. It went two ticks past my stop, and I got washed and rinsed. Volume has migrated, Andy says, and that, that's exactly what happened. You're absolutely right. So the result was, did you see the right swing because of the time frame? Um, I, you know what? To be honest, Chef, I was starting the hunting season, and I was, you know, it's it's like everything else. We've been talking about looking, about actually finding a trade for two weeks, and I found one, didn't I? <laughs> Tim, if you use daily charts for six to eight weeks trades, would you use hourly or range chart for two to three day trade? Yeah, that's about right, Tom. 
Uh, the euro is breaking. Could I comment on the chart? Sure. One second. Well, there you go. So, we were talking about this being a potential fib dance. Our stop and reverse would be hit now. The only problem with playing this as a stop and reverse is, and this is the this is the argument I'd have with Andrews all the time. Okay, I'm he would say to me, be a man and, and you stop and reverse as you just be in the market all the time. That's fine. That's fine, but I had a, a two thousand dollar account. He had a hundred million dollar account or whatever he had in nineteen seventy three or four. Um, where's your stop? Can anybody point out a good stop to me? And thank you for pointing it, that out because this is a good example. So that that little blue line would be us stop reversing if we played that game. Only cash, yeah. And not only that, how about this? If you stopped yourself out right here, you're stopping yourself out and nothing's changed, has it? You're, you're stopping yourself out in the middle of the soup. Yeah, unless you can afford this high right here, and Scotty McClendon says this, and I agree with him. Unless your stop is above this high, and now you're talking about that's Oh, 73. You're getting short at 146.31. Your stops at 73. That's a, that's a bit that's a bit pricey for me. Now we are making lower lows. I'm, I get all that. So these are things we have to work out. I'm not saying that that's not the answer for this fib dance. One of the things to throw in. The question has got to be though, how do we frame the trade for a stop in reverse? Okay. So things to think about. I'll be looking. For, I'm looking for for ideas. We're stalking a new trade entry. Now here's a here's a gorgeous short right here. Aaron, is this the one you're talking about? Yeah. How about that? Hats off to you, my friend. Toby, Toby's proud, I'm sure. All right, so let's go back to commodities. You get the idea. Stop. So we're gonna have to think about it. This is this is a work in progress. This entry. Don't use it. Let's paper trade it. And the reason I want to go back here is okay. You know, we already know the oil story. Wrong time frame. Tim was interested in making a trade. I forced the trade. I got caught with my pants down. I got what I deserved. I got a nice spanking. Let's take a look at, just to make me feel better. I think. Hoggies. We got short hoggies on Thursday. 53.95. We're, we've got three cents in it now. What I said on Friday was, if we took out the double bottoms, I can put my stop above these double tops now. So let's take a look at these double tops. The high is 54.15, 54.05. They're not really doubles, but you also have this high, which I'm, I'm going to throw away now. Let's go. Uh, do you think I'm too eager here? Let me, let me get some uh, emotional advice here. What do you think? That'll be more than a limit higher. Nice catch, Aaron, by the way. Okay, everybody's everybody's voting for moving stops. All right, so we're, we're stocking this together. So now we'll come down here, and let's go, uh, let's go. This is, um, I like about 30 cents, just so you know. So let's go 45. And we're trying to drag. 
right there. Actually, let's just grab this one and change it and say 54, 45, stop. And let's make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't... Everybody wanted to see hunting in... Okay. Live. Now you're seeing it live. Now, what's our objective? 54.30, Bob says. Okay. If the, you know, in hogs, if they're going to come get us, they're going to come get us, just so you know. 43.20? Yeah. Where do you think I'm going to get out? Anybody got a guess? Michael says nothing wrong with risk-free. I don't absolutely disagree. In fact, if we get another close down here, I'll go to break even. How about, how about that? If we close, if we close, um, if we close below the double bottom, I'm going to break even. I'll show you where I'm going, what I'm interested in. Right, right about, I got two possibilities, uh, 46, that'd be, uh, four. yeah, I think right around, I think right around there. I, I'll, I'll take my money, let me make it green. I'll be willing to take my money right before we get into this congestion. Although I think it's going quite a bit lower. Anywhere down in here, and we'll fine-tune it. If price starts to head lower, we'll fine-tune it. But, you know, if they hit this, they can't hit it. It's two, it's two cent limit. It would take two days to get here. So we'll have time to fine-tune it. But um, on either side, we could fine-tune it. Why do I say lower? Um, it's the biologics of the situation. They push it higher to sell it. We're just a, we're coming up to the end of this contract. They run about $0.10, cents, $0.15, cents if they can. Then remember, they've got to buy baby hogs. So then they push it back lower so they can get their baby hogs cheaper. They work it over back and forth. It's a rolling chop. They work it over back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is not our $10 cycle, Magnus says. Yeah, I'm fine with that too. Exactly. It's a biological cycle. All right, so jumped out of a little bit in the oil. That's my fault. So far, hogs are looking okay. Let's see uh, what our bean, our friends in the beans are doing. And we're going to have to move over to a different month here soon. Here's Novi's. And no, I did not bring the big chart. I'm sorry. It's doing nothing. Let's do this. Let's do March 10. Real quick. And then we'll grab the stock markets. Um... Z S da 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 da, da. M O G Anybody know is it M O one? I don't know what they are. M ten? I don't know what E signal's doing. Guess not. ZS M one maybe Okay, well let's not look at it. You may know? M O. Okay. Th oh Reese, good morning. How are you? Reese. Market geometry. Parity. Parity cups. Um, and I want a daily. Well, I don't know. Maybe the, my e-signal is not cooperating today. Uh, it doesn't like that one either, Reese. I don't know. Let's just leave it alone. M.O., yeah. 
I didn't put in zero. Oh, sorry. See, I'm running out of oxygen. I'm brain starved. M zero with a, with a space. Yeah, that's zero. Add. That is zero. Well, I'll come back to it. I'll figure it out while I'm... Oh, what the heck did I do? Sorry about that. I'll figure it out when I'm more awake. Uh, let's go to... I, I literally just moved this version of Ensign over last night right before I went to bed. And you can see um, it's still got a bit of a kink in it. My dad is still... Uh, and I remember when I wrote this... Uh, Last week, I said, don't go getting short, folks, just because I said, okay, enough's enough, it's over. I have no technical analysis to base this on, and I certainly wouldn't be putting on a position. We'll start to stalk a short position if we start to see weakness. There's no signs of weakness yet. But that being said, with all the stuff I see in the news, with all the talk I hear from everybody that I know, that if I, in fact... A friend of mine who's a hedge fund manager just wrote an article this morning. Oh, no wonder Reese, Reese is right. It's H-O, not M-O. Thank you. Um, with all the, you know, with all the talk about, you know, it's, it's just the, the, the trend upwards is relentless. Uh, a hedge fund friend of mine just wrote an article about how tough it is to be a hedge fund manager. And he caught a bit of the run up, but he's not long at the moment, just so you know. And he's feeling a lot of pressure because the fourth quarter is on its way now. And, you know, what if it keeps going up? Copper's headed lower. I think that I think that tells you everything right there. Copper is it. We did hit off of upper wedge line on daily E-mini e S&Ps. Well, let's look at the E-mini S&Ps and hope they update. So I wrote in here earl earlier last week, OVA, meaning... People have been asking me for this entire rally. When do, you, when do you think it's over? And I kept saying, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm really befuddled, I'm not sure. And I finally said, you know, enough's enough. This thing is over. I'm putting this down. And take a look. It's the top of this major high here. When we were rebounded. We got a couple mountains going on. Enough's enough. Get, let's get some reality, folks. And I think people are going to get it. Bear market rallies are extremely tough because they just keep running and running and running. And before you know it, you're sucked in at the end and then they turn on a dime and you just get blown away. So to Tim, Tim calls the top at 1072, Mary says. Well, we'll see. What news will be the catalyst? Uh, maybe the defaults on the uh, gold. Maybe... Um, Maybe a lack of trust in Obama. Maybe the bonds turning down hard on this extra auction. Could be all of those things. When the last guy comes in. If I tried to draw a cup with a handle right now, Don, I'd hurt myself. How's that? <laughs> How about losing 500K jobs a week? Yeah, there you go, Mark. How many weeks in a row can we do that? Michael Jackson says that he can go long, and then, then the market will collapse for me. Thank you. Let, let me know the moment you get long, please. Israel strikes Iran. That's a possibility, Bernie. See, Bernie, I knew, I knew I'd drag you into this. Bernie is the spy from the Swiss National Army. I'm telling you. I sussed you out, Bernie. Uh, let's look at the mini S&Ps. Those of you that are a we're waiting for daily less or step by step lessons, it is S and P's. Never mind. Let's look at the Dow. Uh, and those of you in mentoring that have been patient as well, um, I, I truly appreciate it. You are my family, all of you. Um, I do this because I I have good, a good time, uh, and I truly do have a love for all that's going on at this website. Um, I appreciate your patience. I am getting better. I will get better. I have three chronic conditions. 
Crohn's, rheumatoid arthritis, and extremely bad asthma. You put the three together, it's not a pretty thing. And so when a bug does hit me, it's not that easy to kill. So they're working very hard, and they will. Um, so now, thank you very much. I appreciate your patience. Uh, just, just hang in there. You'll, you'll get paid back a thousand times for your patience, believe me. Christine says, sure, it's not the Swiss Navy. Well, he always claimed it was the Swiss Army, that, but maybe they call their Bernie. Do you call it the Swiss Navy or the Army? Or are they the same? Oh, by the way, for those, those of you that thought, that keep hearing that things are better, <laughs> Swiss Army knives, yes, thank you. Uh, for those of you that th think things are going better, if you didn't, NASA does not know, Bernie says. Okay, I'll leave you. I, I'll quit, Bernie. Um, for those of you that have been hearing that things are going better, let's let's think about this now. In July, 29 states lost jobs out of 50 in the United States. In August, 42 states out of 50 lost jobs. Does it sound like things are getting better? I know more people out of jobs now than I did a month ago. Kevin says it's not the the uh, calm before the perfect storm. I don't know how perfect it's going to be, but I think the government just announced not backing three trillion dollars of money market funds September eighteenth. Yahoo, that's good news. More banks are in trouble than ever, absolutely. Savings rate is also going up. So there's a change in the environment of the people, a long-term change, I believe. Absolutely. All Put all those things together, that will cause a contraction in economic activity, which means stock market lower. Manufacturing is picking up, and state jobs expenditures are drying up. Mm, okay. Same thing here in the uh, Dow. Look where we are. We're at the top of this second spike high. We're also at just about at 10,000. We're 200 points away from 10,000. Going to be a tough nut to crack, I think. Just my guess. Do I have a long-term downward target on the Dow? My long-term target was 5,500 in the uh, in the Dow, and that was from November 2007 at 13,500 live at, at Money Show. Um, I did a chart for them, and the, out of my mouth, I didn't even think about it. I said, I think it's going to 7,200. If that doesn't hold, it's going to 5,500. And, of course, it didn't hold. It uh, went down to 6,600. I'm sorry, I missed it by about 8%, but maybe the party's not over yet. Dollar is going to be devalued. Absolutely. The fear of losing is greater than the greed of gaining, so people will back off spending and hoard. I absolutely agree. What's the ABC down? That's an interesting question. Actually, do you really want to know? You, you, you might scare yourself. There's the. Let's see what the high is first. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Okay, let's let's go from here to here. This is just approximate. Uh, I'm not going to look too stupid. I think. Look at this. I hadn't done, you know what, I hadn't done this before. 5,800, not awful. E. Fifty-five, fifty-four, something like that. Yeah, I think. Anyway, it's only a four thousand point drop at this point. No big deal. Well, you know, it'll feel like the world's over, but then if you think about it, relative, it's really hasn't gone that far. It's only going to make new lows maybe by a thousand if you think about it. But because this rally was so swift and everybody was sucked in, it's going to feel like the world's ended. It's going to feel worse than this drop from thirteen thousand five hundred. 
and probably more damage will be done. By the way, yes, this fits 1931 perfectly. Um, this will feel. This will probably do more damage to your personal 401ks, etc., unless you're care cautious. Okay. I think the Asian market will go down with the U.S. market. Oh, I think it'll be a worldwide wild, wide effect, but parts of Asia are growing at 9%. I don't think they'll go down like us, no. Have I heard about the Genius Fund saying they average over 6% for weak returns? Okay, here we go, Michael. You ready? Ready? Have you ever heard of the Rule of 72? Yes, it's another Madoff scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. And they can go ahead and sue me if they want. Russ says he pulled his 401k at 14600 All right, Russ. Then you owe us all a drink. Anyway, you cannot keep that going for very long. That's exactly right. In fact, I know people that make more than 100% a year. Richard Dennis is one of them. But he's also been bankrupt three times. So if you're going to swing like that, it's going to catch up with you. Capital One, you're my pleasure. He says, media lines are awesome. Thank you for your time and effort for helping others. I get back a thousandfold everything I put out. Thank you all so much. So anyway, when you see things like that that look like they're too good to be true, they are too good to be true. That's why I warned you about that uh, Elliott Wave Forks book whatever that this guy's talking about, plus this guy's $17,500 course. There are no secrets. Jesse Livermore went broke three times. Yeah, you swing for the fences, you pay for it. Absolutely. For those of you, this is from Magnus, and I'm going to quote him directly. For those of you that are not premium members, it's a, the absolutely best bang for your bucks ever. And the reason why is because, and I'm going to add this part, these are mini, mini mentoring sessions. People pay $5,000 for 12 sessions. Uh, to do mentoring, and my mentoring is full, and I'm going to be doing less and less mentoring now. Um, you get mentoring now here, you know, for 99 bucks a month or whatever it is. The next crisis in the future will either come from Mumbai, Dubai, or Shanghai. Ronald, I would guess out of the three is Dubai. Russ, if your mother-in-law ever needs any uh, help in terms of advice about Crohn's or needs... Uh, our, remember our, our uh, charity that we feed here, Advocacy for Patients with Chronic Disease. The head of it, she's had Crohn's for 30 years. She's also the assistant to the government, governor of Connecticut. So, well, if anybody has Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, we are a font of knowledge. Ronald, just drop me an email. Anyway, Dubai, um, I was on a plane with uh, somebody from the Financial Center of Dubai, and they told me it was a ghost town. Yeah, Matt, um, you missed the currencies in gold earlier in the day. But the hopefully, this will be up in like uh, half an hour. Because we, we have a new T10 connection, just so you know. We went from a T2 to a T10, and then we went to a new way of uh, rendering that should only take about 10 minutes. So hopefully this will be up here in about half an hour. You'll be able to go to the site. So it's 7.45. I'm going to go upstairs and get some uh, breakfast and some auction. Take care, everybody. Thank you for spending your time here. Have a great week. I'll speak to most of you tomorrow. I'm Tim Morge at MarketGeometry.com. Take care.